Hey everyone, it's me, Ethan, here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at Sideshow's Mythos version of Boba Fett. So moving on here, we get to look at the box here. As you can see, we have a nice picture of Boba Fett here with holding a concussion grenade launcher, I believe. And you can see that this is made by Sideshow with the Sideshow emblem being down here. Usually you would see those if they're also exclusive for Sideshow if it's a Hot Toys figure. This is not a Hot Toys figure, by the way. Just to let people know. This is an actual figure made by Sideshow. Then moving on to the back here, we get another picture of Boba Fett. More in an action pose than what the front was. And here you can see we just have a little bit more basic information on, on the bottom here. And just this is part of the Mythos line figures. First time we ever saw Boba Fett like this was in a statue that Sideshow made. But overall, that is pretty much what the box looks like on the outside. Here now we have the box open, but as you can see when we open up the box, they have a nice art panel of the figure again. As you can see here, we have Boba Fett more in a pose that he is actually watching something. But again, this is just the art panel. So when you take that off now, you get to see where the figure would be stored. Now I did take him out, so you won't really see him in here. But again, this is where he would be packaged. Pretty much that is what's inside the box. So moving on here before we get to the figure here. You can see Sideshow packed this guy full of just different gear. As you can see here, he comes with three lightsabers, probably from Jedi that he most recently hunted. Then he had, has his jetpack, which is the one that you would usually see in uh, Return of the Jedi, which is the blue one. The nozzles here do, or I should say the, the jet actual, like where the jet comes out of, uh, they both do move up and down, or you can, I guess, yeah, sort of up and down. Uh, they are kind of loose. Well, mine, I don't know if it's just mine or if all of them are, but mine are kind of loose. I don't know why, but they kind of are. And then we here we have the a tactical knife that he has, which I'll show where that goes because it's pretty cool where this is hidden. Because usually you don't see Boba Fett with a knife. Usually we see him with a... This is Blaster. Here we can see now we have a the... Grenade launcher that I was talking about earlier when it was on the art uh, front of the art or front of the box, front portrait of Boba Fett. As you can see here, again, some weathering effect in the front here, like it's been used multiple times. As you can see, a little bit of detail. Anyway, there is no trigger on here, so I don't know necessarily how he fires this. But oh well, it's Star Wars. There's something probably. Then here we'll see he has a normal blaster pistol which goes in a nice hard case holst holster that he has on his belt, which is pretty cool. As you can see here, there are a little bit of weathering effects in the front here and sort of by the handle, but overall, pretty cool. And then we have the e E3, his main blaster rifle. We usually see him, even though he switched between two of them in the movies. This is more of the one that everyone likes. As you can see here, very nice detail weathering effect in the front here. And pretty much on the, the hilt back here, there's a little bit of detail, as you can see, with the metal pieces that go on the, on the back of it. And then finally, we get to the last weapon that he has, which is the DL-19 blaster rifle. As you can see here, very long blaster, very long. As you can, And then also just it has a bunch of little bit of detail. Well, I should say a little bit, but it has a lot with the camouflage wrapping around it, which is pretty cool. It has this nice strap that you can put on the figure. It does have movable sights, so you can move that sight. And then there's also a sight here on the front of the blaster, which you can kind of see there. Sorry that I can't really move these things up. Again, I'm only, only working with one hand right now. Hopefully that will change sooner or later. And then you can see here, it does come with a foldable tripod, which I am not gonna mess with because when it comes loose, it's kind of hard to get back on. But overall, that is what all the accessories he comes with. Now, here is Boba Fett himself, the actual character. As you can see here, we'll move over along onto the top to the bottom as we go through. As you can see here, we have a nice, nice amount of detail in the helmet. Very nice scratching or paint wear effects on there as well. You can see this time the helmet includes the jagged eyes, which are like a very, very big symbol. They really have a uh, deep meaning in Mandalorian culture, even though Boba Fett's not a Mandalorian. As you can see here, we have more 
more detail, you can see the yellow paint stripes inside the helmet here. And then just more scratching as long as we go farther back onto the helmet. And you can see there's even more of that paint scratching off here on the, on the back, pretty much. His range, uh, range finder, excuse me, does go down. Uh, it is a little bit tricky to work with, so I would recommend using two hands so that I'm not going to really play with that since I only have one hand available at the time right now. Um, as you can see here, they have the jetpack. It is hooked up the same. It's sort of hooked up on these two like little hinges. It is a little bit difficult to actually do, but um, if you do it maybe one to two times, you'll probably get it on the second chance, which is good. As you can see here, we have more paint wear on the jetpack. Very nice detail on the jetpack here. Uh, what else do we have? We have here the movable thrusters again. They do move, like I said before. And then here on the back here, we get to see more. You can see even the back of the belt here, which is very detailed. And I don't know what these are, but I guess these are like sort of more belts. There's like these red bands that run across his like lower torso. Part. I, I don't know what it is. So then here you can see on the belt here, it does come with a couple things where you can connect things to. So anyway, I don't think the grenade uh, launcher here goes exactly right here on this little part that they include where you can attach something. But I attached it there just thinking it looks cool because I did not ori originally have that there. I just put that on there. Now when I pulled, them out, I pulled it back out of the box, I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm going to leave it there. Looks pretty cool. So if you guys like that, uh, maybe put that on yours. Be kind of cool. Here we have uh, the lightsabers. As you can see, there is a actual. Uh, there are some little uh, belts that are down here that are in a circle that you can clip the or slide the lightsabers through, and then they pretty much is held there by friction. And then here we have the hard case, hard case holster for that blaster pistol. I was. I was showed earlier. As you can see here, it's very, it's a nice solid piece of plastic. Uh, here you can see that this is the giant blaster that's falling. But again, very nice here. Solid piece of plastic. And then here you get to see this is where you hang the giant blaster. It usually just be on his shoulder. So it really, really just hangs on to like the upper part of the shoulder armor there. As you can see here, there is some detail on the shoulder armor, which I forgot to show this side too. Here you can see the mythosaurus on this side of the shoulder, or on this side, which is pretty cool. And then moving on down, there are, uh, it does have chest armor underneath. Again, this is sort of blocking it. I don't really want to move it due to me already having it posed. But again, it does have some nice weathering under there with a lot of paint chips and all that, which looks really good. So again, it's pretty much, you're not going to see it mostly because this poncho again is not, it isn't removable, which I did not mention, but it isn't removable. So you will not really see it. And then moving on down here, you can see we have some more detail, I guess on the groin armor piece, you can call it, uh, on the belt here, we do have some nice little pockets that you can, uh, you can't put stuff in, but it's just there as added detail. Then we have some more pockets on the coma here, or coma. As you can see, uh, it does have, these do not open, but they're just there as the other details. The pockets, he also has pockets on his legs. Uh, again, I, they do not open. They're just there for detail. And then we also have some more armor detail on the knee pads here. As you can see, there's some paint scratching again. Some, looks like some dirt. And then pretty much it. And then here we have the holster for his knife, which is pretty cool. It's another hard plastic case. And the, uh, the tactical knife can just slide in and out of there. And then here we have the boots, which are pretty cool. Again, they do kind of hinder the articulation on the, on the ankles there. So I would be just a little bit careful there, I guess you can say, not to damage anything. But overall, that is pretty much what the figure looks like. So guys, this part's going to be just saying uh, what just to be careful with and then also just go right into the overall review. As you can see here, uh, just be careful with these switches on his gauntlets. They can break. I have 
And why I say this is because I've actually broke one. As you can see here on his left gauntlet here, I did accidentally hit one of the switches. It's still there, so it just looks like it's been flipped on. But again, it just be careful with it because if you guys accidentally do it, it may just actually come off more than how mine is. I was just lucky enough where it's still on, but it's anyway, you can see it's broken. And then another thing to be careful with is posing this figure. The body on him is to me is looser than the than other figures I've dealt with, which is Hot Toys figures. Their bodies are usually a lot more stiffer and eaten a lot easier to work with because they actually will stand by themselves uh, easily. You can do that with the Sideshow figure. Not saying you can't. Uh, again, you really have to play with it. I think in order to actually get it where it would stand on its own. That's why I have mine on his stand, just because I can't. I just don't trust him standing up by himself. But again, those are pretty much the two things you just have to really watch out for. So overall, I definitely would recommend this figure. Just be careful with him. You can get him on Sideshow.com for $250. Although right now, at this time, he's actually on a pre-order again. So if you guys are interested in buying him, I again, enter in that pre-order. He won't be coming out until I think around September to November of this year. So I was lucky enough that I, I pre-ordered him the first time he came out. So again, he is a great figure if you're really into collecting like Boba Fett or just even Mandalorian characters, even though Boba Fett again isn't necessarily a real Mandalorian. I would definitely recommend picking this guy up just because he's very detailed. So pretty much that's all, guys. I would definitely uh, definitely recommend you guys like this video. Leave a comment down below. And then also, if you can, try to get other people to subscribe or just subscribe to my channel. Because again, if you want to see more videos on six scale figures or even Lego reviews, it really helps when I have uh, subscribers. So again, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.